Ah, g'day, g'day. Welcome to Farming Live Australia. Today's video is an in-depth look at the Perla Barb 62cc version 4 chainsaw from Jono and Jono. And I will include a comparison between the version 1 61.5cc saw just to show you that these saws are completely different. They're not related. The version 4 is not an upgraded version of the 61.5cc saw. It's a totally different saw, which I believe is based on the Timber Pro saw. In the video, I will assemble the saw, show you what you need to do to get it going, and cut a load of firewood, and at the end, I'll give you my impressions of what I think of this saw. So stay till the end and see if I'm a happy boy or... Dad, dad, dad. Bit of a disclaimer, I'm not paid by Jono and Jono for these reviews. I just love toys. I don't have a financial interest in Jono and Jono or any other chainsaw company. I'm not going out with his sister or married to her or anything like that. All statements are just my impression of the machine. However, I am going to do an update video in a few months time once I put some hours on these machines and really have a good look at how it went and what it did and what went wrong, if anything. I have done an unboxing video of this saw. So if you'd like to see exactly what you get in the box, just have a look at that video and I'll put a link in the description. Just one other thing before we get start playing with the saw. I know it's not very manly and even if you've got to hide in the dunny to do it, read the bloody book. It'll save you a lot of headache. And incidentally, it's written in English that you can read. Here's the two Pearl of Barb saws side by side. This one here is a 61.5 cc saw and this is a new saw I bought which is 62 cc version 4 saw and straight away I can see some big differences and one big thing I see straight away is if you look at the chain brake handle there it has a connecting point here and here which I think is very desirable on the 61.5 cc version 1 saw it is only connected on here on one side and it's, it works and I've had no trouble with it but I would far rather have this. This, is, this. this has a lot more movement in it, whereas this is, this is quite firm. On the 61.5cc saw, the filter is a screen type. You can get it off just by pulling it off, and it's sealed via a rubber gasket in there. The design is that the rubber gasket seals on that surface. I'll just move the rubber gasket around so you can clearly see what's going on in there. So you can see the 62cc version 4 Pearl Barb saw has a proper cartridge filter, which I think is a way better idea. Another difference is that the choke knob is much smaller. You can see here the choke knob on the version 4 is a lot bigger and easier to get hold of. Having said that, I've had no trouble with this at all. The switch on the saw is pretty much the same. On the 61.5 Pearl Barb saw, that is the adjustment screw there for the chain bar. This is what's inside the chain bar cover. The actual chain bar adjuster is pretty similar. As you can see up here, it doesn't have the chain brake hanging off it because it's got two completely independent points of contact for that. It has the adjustment screw here instead of up here which to be honest I think is a bit easier to work over the years I've had chainsaws with the adjustment screw in both of those spots and haven't found either of them to be a real problem except that the ones like this I have had it where I've had to replace that unit there because of the little system in there breaking down I've had to replace these on a couple of saws but they are cheap to replace this is what's inside the side plate where the chain bar goes on the 62cc version 4 saw. And one thing that they have in these saws is this. The other one had it too. What I think it's there for is that when this goes on, that piece there is to take up the gap that normally the chain bar would fill. So before you go any further, remove that. You don't want to leave that on and try and put the chain bar and chain on because your chain bar can't sit straight and it'll bugger up everything. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the packaging on the bar 
and see how it fits on the saw. When you get your bar, you'll see some bar maintenance tips on a little slip of paper. If you're going to get any life out of your bars, please take notice of these tips. And in particular this one, which says, clean out your oil hole. I had a bloke come to the other day and he said, oh, I'm having trouble with my chainsaw, could you help me? Both the oil holes were completely blocked and the paint was burnt off the bar from it getting that hot. All right, just for giggles, I'll put it on with the riding the right way up for starters. If you look on the chain, it tells you all the particulars about the chain, how many links it's got, and it also tells you the size file you need to use for it. It's important not to use the wrong size file. Okay, so when you do this, just make sure that in there the chain is on the driving dog. Just lay your bar in there and let it rest on the clutch. Then get your outside cover and have a look if it's going to line up with the hole for the adjustment dog. When you put this on, just put it on loosely and see if the adjusting dog is going to go in in the right spot. And in my place it's not going to, so I've got to wind it the right, correct way. And when it's in the right spot, that should fall into the hole. Okay, like that. Put these nuts on a little more than finger tight or finger tight if you've got strong fingers. You see I pushed that down. Now, all you need to do now is adjust the adjuster and tighten up the chain. So let's go clockwise and you can see now the chain's very tight. Push your bar on the tip up as far as it'll go when you set your chain. That, that's too tight for starters. I'm going to do it just a fraction looser and what I'll do is I'll just I'll just run it round with oil in it a few times and then I'll adjust it again. New chains always take a bit of adjusting at first to get them right. Yeah, that's fairly loose but I'd rather have it loose and tight when it first starts up. And I will adjust accordingly after I've used the saw. Alright, we're getting down to the wire now, nearly start up time. Just one last job to do before I endeavour to start the saw. I have put fuel in it and chain bar oil. We'll just get on to the very last step before I try and start it. One important step to do after you start your saw and before you cut your first piece of timber is to run the chain above a piece of wood and make sure oil is flowing out of the bar. We're out in the paddock and we're going to cut some firewood. The first thing I'm going to do with the saw is just cut small wood. The smaller the better for a while and try and keep the load on the saw down a little bit and vary the revs quite a bit as opposed to cutting a big log where you go into it and you just got it set flat out and you're just trying to hog into the log. Instead of doing that, I'm going to do what I said and just cut smaller pieces of timber for a while to keep the sustained load off the saw and give it a chance to settle in a bit. You can see already the chain's loosened up.
when you do this, if you lift the bar up, you can see the chain slack. And if you put it down, it goes tight. Because the pressure is up when you're cutting, you should always lift it up and keep lifting it up while you adjust the chain. So you can see now, it's, it's done up tighter, not as tight as I'd like. Okay, with the pressure up on the bar, tighten up your nuts. With these nuts, make sure they're good and firm, because if they're not, you're putting a lot of pressure on your adjusting system when you're cutting. I don't know whether you can see, but if, if you look in the chain bar oil hole, you'll see that it's nearly down halfway after doing a fair bit of cutting. And if you look in the fuel hole, it's also down about halfway. So that gives me a good indication that it's oiling properly. When it runs out of fuel, there should be only a little bit of oil left in the oil tank. I've used the saw for half a tank of fuel, cutting up little sticks and small saplings, and now I'm getting onto some bigger wood. It's not real big, it's probably about five to six inches thick through, and it's also a lot harder wood. It's been here a long time and it's proper hardwood. It's, it's actually blood wood that was killed in the cyclone in 2011 in Yazi. <coughs> the last time I used this saw was 48 hours ago, and I've filled it up with oil and fuel and sat it on this rag to see whether I've got any leaks out of the fuel or oil tank because it is a fault with a lot of Chinese saws. That makes me happy. There's nothing worse than a saw that bloody leaks oil everywhere. I've now put four tanks full of fuel through the saw and I guess it's time to find out if I'm happy or sad. And I've got to tell you, I'm extra happy. There's a couple of very minor things with the saw which I'll point out to you that you need to be aware of, but they're nothing and I will show you that. This is inside the cap where the spark plug's there and this is the air filter. And originally this nut, I couldn't get it off. Obviously I can now. This is a common thing with them apparently. Someone else has mentioned to me they had trouble. What seems to happen is the plastic that the wing nut's made out of and the plastic that this retaining piece is made out of for some reason seem to stick together between the saw being manufactured and it getting to you. What I did was got a really big shifting spanner and fitted it onto this retaining piece. Then I got me moldy grips and I got on the wing nut and turned it, and once I was able to turn it a bit, it was okay. You can see now it's all working quite well. And what I actually did, when I took it off, I actually got the wing nut and put a little bit of grease on that surface just to make sure it didn't stick again. The only other negative thing that I found was that where this spanner is retained in the handle of the saw, I don't think it's retained quite well enough and I did have it fall out with vibration and I had to go and look for it. However, there's an easy fix for that. The spanner is supposed to go in there like that so that you've always got it with you. However, this little clip here doesn't seem to grip it tight enough and you can adjust it and I tried but I, I didn't think it was still good enough. I've just made a little piece of metal and drilled a hole in it and bent this up here so I can get my thumb on it. If I push it into that position it, it retains the spanner quite well and if I put it into that position I can get the spanner out. That I, that's the only thing that I could find on the saw that wasn't 100% and really you know you get that with any product. I think this saw for me gets a 99.5 at least. The bar and chain on the saw in my opinion is really good 
the chain is really sharp and it stayed sharp. I don't think in a couple of loads of firewood that the chain has dulled off at all. But I've used heaps of those bars and chains and I've had really good success out of them so I wouldn't have expected anything else. What I'm going to do with the two saws that I bought from Jono and Jono, I'm going to run them exclusively in the next six months and then I'm going to make a video about how they went, any problems, etc, etc. Anyway, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. We'll see you next time.